What's up and welcome to Idle Insights, a show where each week I, Trevor Bettis, <laughs> talk to interesting people about idle champions and Dungeons and Dragons. And with this week is returning guest, Mr. B. Dave Walters. <laughs> That, is, that doesn't work quite as well when I'm too far from the camera, but hello, <laughs> hi, blame me, Hotman. Yep. How you doing, buddy? Uh, excellent. How about yourself? I can't complain. I'm excited it's... to do a show where I get to talk to my friend for 50 minutes. So. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, happy, happy Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh, we're uh, we're here today to talk about some fun things. We are live today, chat. I'm getting live. better about letting you know that ahead of time. Uh, we, this is we'll... this is happening in real time. We're like a seven second delay, but you whoa, know, whoa. you know, you don't know whoa. what I might do. Whoa, whoa nope. Whoa. Yeah, oh, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's there's a lake back there. I know you just see like blinding white light, but it, it is back there. There's just a lake the back there. There's a, there's a lake back there. <laughs> So remember, dis- remember those wise words, everyone. There's a lake back there. I mean, if I if I if I disappear, okay, hang on. Um, I I wish I could show you this, but I will ruin all of Lauren's wonderful work. It's like here in the lake house because I'm here for Air D and D. Right next to me, there is a door in the closet that is closed and padlocked. And every time the air comes on, it sort of does like the thing, you know, the doors do. So I'm just in here chilling. The first time I was here, it's like, dook, 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 and I'm like, not like this, Lord, you know, <laughs> not, like, not, 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 like, not like this, Jesus, you know, not. Come on. Uh, is, this, is, this, <laughs> is this the is this the the barbarian Airbnb or? <laughs> you know, we will hold court in the street if it is. Like, I mean, if if you if you hear uh, of a house near Lake Sinclair burning to the ground, I want you to know it's because something came out of that door, and <laughs> we've all got to die. So, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, there's going to be a giveaway in the middle what? of this episode as long as, you know, B-Dave and I don't go off on a tangent and I forget what time it is like we so normally we, do. Okay, okay, hang on. Wait, I'm going to – wait, hang on. I know how I'm going to do this. I know oh, God, do this. he's going to do it. He's... Uh, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm absolutely going to do it. I'm going to take a little screenshot here so I have the frame. <laughs> and then and then I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you here. Wait, wait, wait just come come with me, dear friends. Oh, oh, oh I'm my not, God. I'm not going to make you too oh. motion sick. Look ah. at, look, Look at that. That's terrifying. That's right? Not, and so, and that's then, not you know, something that should exist. And when the air comes on, it's like... Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, uh, what? You know? Hang on, oh, let me, let me frame, frame it. Lauren, you don't have to do anything, production overlord. I will keep adjusting the camera until I get back where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Look at that. That's not bad. That's not bad. Seamless. <laughs> Lauren, and you're back. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is what uh, everyone tuned in for. They knew what this was. They knew what it was. This is this is this is what you're tuning in for. Uh well, B Dave, if somehow, some way people in chat don't know who you are, who are hmm. you for those fine folks who may not know? Hey, hello. Welcome from the year 2016. Uh it, it is I, B Dave Walters. Uh friend to all mankind. Most 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 of mankind. Uh, I am a storyteller and dungeon master. I have told uh, a story or two or 30 here on this very channel uh, for Idle Champions. Idle Champions Presents. been blessed to be the DM for six of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, six yeah. of those. Uh, and also was uh, fortunate to play my lucky boy Freely, uh, the halfling, uh, for um, a voluminous amount of streams for many years. <laughs> Uh, until he retired and you know some interesting stuff has been happening with him which i'm sure we're going to talk about today yeah. when, especially, especially when we when we give the code um mm. although you also have to use it like a verbal component of a spell like i do like you you, <laughs> you have you have to say it i have to i have to hear it oh oh you oh you, you uh, uh glitch surf ely <laughs> yeah Mm-hmm. There you go, your spell component for the day, your verbal mm-hmm. component. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we're, we're here to talk about uh, uh, Freely, some new stuff going on with him, as uh, well as, you know, just some fun D&D stuff with B-Dave overall. Um, but, I mean, I, you know, I guess we may as well, you know, cover old ground again, just in case someone hasn't seen it. Who is Freely? Uh, Freely is, uh, the, he, he, he is the halfling of action. Uh, he is my lucky boy. The uh, luckiest he, boy. It's true. He began uh, as a thought experiment of a four-class character. Uh, He is a bard, paladin, warlock, sorcerer, um, which worked fantastically, to tell you the truth. Um, And uh, uh, yeah, it's it's. um, 
I started out guesting on Heroes of the Plains, although see now I'm messing with it. I feel like I'm not. I'm not, I feel like I'm not framed. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm not framed. Um, you got it. Uh, <laughs> guest starring on Heroes of the Plains, I uh, ended up being uh, no, it was still Heroes of the Veil vale at that time, mm. uh, and then uh, was was elevated to full time. And really, there were like four or five evolutions of that show where I played that character. Um, <laughs> And uh, it, it was just a great time. And, and really, he really did make his own luck. And, and thanks to the good people at Idle Champions, it's the first video game that I got to be a part of, to have a character in. Uh, yeah. So you can you can add him to your formation, uh, and he will make everything better. Um, the times I've gone through this process of uh, developing the character, and they show you the animations and stuff, and they show you, like, the KO animation when they lose. And I was like, but you don't, you don't even need this one. Like, that's not, <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> like why 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 waste the cycles you know animating a sequence of events that will never come to be you know um, that, that's funny you say that because the, the the one time i got to work on a champion the the one thing i absolutely loved was her ko animation because she's a plasmoid she just kind of wobbles <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's good yeah. stuff good stuff yeah I, uh, the, actually, the other funny thing that I realized the other day, because we always had the joke on Champions of the Lord that you couldn't have Freely and Farida in the same uh, formation because they're in the same seat. You also can't have my champion, Vin Ursa, because th- she's in the same seat, too. No, we're in the same, the same place in the formation. Um, it's because we it's because we be too powerful. That's right? why, you know, yep. you, gotta, you gotta spread it out some. Like, I mean, <laughs> if, if everybody, if, we, if we're just all doing all the same hero and in the same place, then just bad guys would win somewhere else. See, that's why you gotta, you gotta spread it. You, you, you need a strong anchor. A yep. strong anchor. They'd be, they'd be too afraid to do anything. We, you know, we, got, we gotta true. have adventure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Uh, so yeah, we're here today to talk about glitch freely, uh, which Lauren is uh, gonna Mike Wazowski Mike Mike Wazowski me with. There he oh, is. There we go. Hey, look at him. He hey, looks look kind of familiar. Uh, mm, can't place that face. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> don't know where I seen that guy. Yeah. Do, do, do you want to? Yeah, I'll let you explain the glitches so I don't say too much and spoil it. Um, yeah, so the uh, in the uh, current uh, adventure we have going on right now, I mean. We have two going on. The newest adventure, Fortune's Wheel. Um, the uh, the champions die. I got to write the first TPK in this game to happen. Um, and they come back in new forms. Excuse uh, me. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Was it at least a G-Death? Oh, yeah. You all got wiped out by uh, uh, the Lady of Pain because a uh, unseen force multiversally entangled the Tomb of Annihilation with Sigil. Well, I mean, that's valid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eh, if I had to think of an easy way to for, lead to my undoing, it would be a bad guy I wasn't supposed to look at. Because the moment you were like, don't look, I'm like, don't look where? And then just... Like, like, <laughs> that is very close to what happened, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that is a very effective trap to snare me in particular. That is, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, uh, but, oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm interrupting you. Oh, that, yeah, and so the, the champions find themselves in new forms, and uh, we we had a lot of meetings talking about uh, what those forms would be. Uh, yeah, what's when, up? When, when Trevor first point told me that it, he, he was going to write, uh, you know, Freely's death and he was going to come back, I, I very much said I wanted his first words to be, not again. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure you told me Lauren said the exact yeah. same thing. And so both Freely and Orkiro's <laughs> first words are not again. <laughs> oh, not again. And they no. have no idea why they said that because they also <laughs> have amnesia. <laughs> yeah, that's, mm-hmm, yep, yep. It's like new teeth, this is weird, minor, not again, yeah. Uh, so uh, for, for those of you that, that aren't familiar uh, with his aesthetic, and I don't know, Lauren, if you have any of his uh, his his previous stuff where you see what he usually looks like. Um, feel free to throw it up at any time. Block my face out. Um, but he's a he he's a halfling. He's very tall for a halfling, uh, but he's a halfling with a, a red hair with green streaks in it uh, and a mechanical arm, uh, and that's kind of his thing. And so the point behind the glitches was to make them very different but somehow still have a through line uh, with, the, with the original character to, like, draw some... Yeah. Um, they're, they're called nexus points, yeah. Exactly. And, and for Freely, it's his mechanical arm, uh, his glowing green sword, because the green flame blade, yeah. uh, and, and the green streaks on his head. 
uh, although he's, his head is shaved because he's, he's very tall and statuesque and beautiful now. Um, <laughs> but uh, it says he doesn't have any hair. It's the green, the green uh, scar on his head where the streaks in his hair were. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy with my fallen ASMR boy, uh, which is kind of the exact opposite of like my, my sweet little halfling. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was one of those that like I remember early on in conversations when uh you know we we had picked the champions and stuff we were talking about the other skins uh I was just like I mean I feel like there's an opportunity here to to have some fun with what these alternate looks look like with uh who plays them uh mm -hmm. and I was so happy those were able to come come through because yeah see, seeing a formation with you Lauren and Aaron it, like it's like hey it's my friends and they're fighting sure. people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, get thee behind me. You know, I don't even know what Glitch Freely's voice would be like. You'd be like, get behind me. You know what I mean? That, yeah, so. I, I'll be honest. That has been a weird point for me while writing is because, like, yeah. I, I think in my head I'm still just – having the same voice going through because there was something there was something great about like you know freely's voice coming out of you constantly in this <laughs> mechanical body um, i mean that is also valid I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen that happen a couple of times you never know where that voice could show up so yeah yeah well <laughs> and, and like and, and like the other thing is because this is text only because i don't get to you know have any descriptors or anything i still wanted to y'all to be able to your characters to have their voice with yeah, it, like you'd be able to read a line and note that's freely that's orkira without messing with that. I, I would love to in my heart of hearts i would love to hear the havilar recap for what happened when this is all <laughs> i this is all I, said and done. I think I have done, I think I have set it up once for Havilar to do a recap and then I skipped over it because it was just repeating information, but <laughs> she's like, yeah. okay, here's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Yeah. So, you know, we, the, the glitch skins we had some fun with, uh, I, I hope you had fun with uh, uh, getting to do uh, the, the art consultation on it. Uh, it's, you, you know, initially, uh, I don't want to spoil this too much because who knows somewhere down the road it might come up but uh, i i had two very different concepts of where i could go with freely one oh, was really? much larger which is what and, and the other was much much smaller <laughs> <laughs> and that's all i will say about the other uh, the, uh, that'd the be other. pretty good that'd be yeah. pretty good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that'd be great just freely never the same size in any multiverse <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you in our, our chat right here um what what he was yeah. <laughs> yeah, hang on wait, there, but there you go that's a, that well, other detail yeah you know we'll, we'll hold yeah. on to that maybe mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. maybe something else uh may yeah. happen down the line you never know that's what i mean keep, i've already killed in my all, back pocket i've already killed all the champions once who says i'm not gonna do it again <laughs> man with power i get it i get it yeah mm -hmm. drunk on power with these Google Sheets writing down all these texts. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, the only way to get freely out of that alive would be to blindfold. Like it's otherwise, he's just gonna. He like he's just. It's but it's funny because um, when I created him, which again was now years ago, like twenty eighteen yeah. or twenty nineteen. I made somehow him. so long ago um, now. Right, um, Kinder weren't reintroduced into the game yet, that's but that's right. but that's the vibe I wanted of the fearless little person. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's very much that energy like it never occurs to him to be afraid so because intelligence is his dumb step <laughs> like, <laughs> like maybe he should be scared he just he doesn't realize it so you know just does his thing yeah i love that uh there, there's some of the chat uh coffee coffee nia uh, said familiar freely when I love the idea of just tiny freely just doing a little click animation. <laughs> yeah, but you know, just just there throwing out bardic inspiration and encouragement. You know what I mean? Like you got this. Whoa, duck! Oh god! And then and then lurking writer says, "What do we need to sacrifice and to who for Aaron to come back uh, for at least one more Haviler recap?" Oh my gosh! <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, those were I, I got to the point that in some of those idol champions presents i started doing stuff expressly because <laughs> i was like i just want to hear how havilar is going to describe the sequence of events later like i was like I'm, 
just 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 throwing out the most banana stuff just so I can hear it, hear about it afterwards. Yeah. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. That that is premeditated content right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving, Aaron M. Evans. Yes, absolutely. Um, so okay, I you know we we have talked about a lot of stuff on the show because I think you have been on the show with me more than any other guest. Um, and yeah, you got that crown right now. You got you got mo- most guests. Uh, you you back off, Mark Mir. You back <laughs> off. Yeah, right. Let uh, me have this one thing, Mark. The the funny thing is, is I think. I think the the other person actually I have my sheet open. Uh the uh the only other person that is is going up against you right now is Alicia Marie. Yeah, but that's acceptable though. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That, yeah. that's, uh, all right, that's acceptable. Yeah. This yeah. is at least for a while I've been on, you know. The I I'm sure. you know. I there there are the, the show's been going on longer than me, but I'm, I I have numbers, so. Right. Um but yeah, the so one of the things though that I wanted to talk about, because we've talked about DMing and and stuff like that, I wanted to kind of focus a little bit more on uh, character parts of this. Yeah. Um, so, what is your process like for coming up with a character? Like you, let, let, let's let's even say that it's for a stream show. You know, mm-hmm. this is going to be a show that's going on for a bit, and uh, you're starting at level one. Where do you where do you start when you want to come up with that character? So. Um... I'm going to answer your question, but let's do this. Let's do this hard mode. Let's do this hard mode. Uh, Chat. Throw out. um, Let me see. I don't. I just want them to give me a couple of a couple of. uh, Give me a race, a class, and an alignment. Just, just, just throw it. Throw out a few things here, chat. Race, class, alignment. You know. Okay. You throw it. You chat. You throw it out. I'm going to grab some. Yep. And yeah. Yep. And and but I am going to answer your question. Okay. So. I've been blessed to do this quite a lot. So now one of the first things I ask myself is what have I not done? Mm. Uh, and, and that, that is an increasingly short list of just, you know, what, what, what just, what's a thing I've never played. And then uh, second to that is what would be an interesting like race class combination. Right now, I plan if, if it's a, if it's a stream that I know has some potential to go for some time, I plan every character from level one to level 20 from the beginning. Okay. Because I'm, I'm a Good. refugee from 3.5 and from Pathfinder where things had prerequisites and where it is prerequisites are coming back. So, you know, learn yeah. from my mistakes, kids. <laughs> that if you've taken, you know, the wrong feet at level two, you know, at level 16, you couldn't do this thing, you know, yeah. if you had, if you hadn't made this choice all along. So I decide all those things in advance and I almost always multi-class. Like I, I, I can count on one hand, the number of single class play characters I played is cause somebody made me do it. Um, so I'll decide in advance. I'm like, well, well, where are those level breaks? When am I going to pick that up? You know, like this level, I'll pick up one of Paladin, but this level I'll pick up one of Warlock, you know, mm-hmm. and then like, then two more Paladin. Uh, because I am a min maxer, uh, I, I. But philosophically, the reason why I'm a min maxer, and I guess for surely everyone knows what a min maxer is, but on the off chance of you know just trying to make the most numerically effective character you can all the time. Um, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly reject the Stormwind fallacy that having an effective character and like a fun character are contradictory. Uh, things is not at all because uh, I, I got to fully realize every aspect of Freely's character and personality and story while still just being a wrecking ball. Um, yeah. And the reason why I do that is not only do I not just like it, but I like knowing that the group is going to win because worst case I can carry it, you know, like other people get to have fun and do whatever and make mistakes and experiment because I'm like, when the chips are down, I will kill the dragon. Like, don't worry about it. Like <laughs> the dragon will die. Trust me. You know? Either you or Jim Zub. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like get that Vorpal sword away from Minsk. Yes. Um, or give him two. So he can be dual wielding. Ah, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go for the neck. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and that that's that's the way that I uh, the way that I look at it. And a lot of times, I will um, 
I will try and optimize to the best of my ability, but I will go, I will even go like check message boards and like optimization strategies mm -hmm. and stuff just to make sure that I'm kind of thinking on the right, the right path. And even though I do have an encyclopedic knowledge of this game, I don't know absolutely everything because stuff's yeah. coming out all the time. Yeah. Uh, and also sometimes there's some unintended consequences of like, Ooh, but this connects here with this, like a, a like a lot of stuff with, um, elven accuracy. Mm. And, uh, you know, what Elven Accuracy can do for, say, a rogue, you know? Uh, and then if it's a rogue, but you tack, like, two levels of Paladin. For the record, everybody should have two levels of Paladin. Like, <laughs> if, if, you, if you can cast spells, you should have two levels of Paladin. Like, yeah. Smite is just worth its weight in Platinum. Um, you know, at least, again, until if the changes from 1D&D go through. Um and uh, so I'll, I'll always like that. And then I'll look at, and there's some classes that are like a really great chassis for a different build. Like, mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, you play what you want, follow your heart, yeah. of course. Yeah. But like, there's not really a reason to be a level 20 barbarian. Not really. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, past like three, you, you've kind of gotten a, a, lot of, a lot of the meat off of that bone. And Paladin is similar. Um, I mean, some of the auras and some of that stuff is interesting, but I mean, once you get smite and, and maybe your level three, um, uh, paladin oath stuff, um, pending what you're trying to do, it's better than then to deviate to something else, especially if it's another charisma class, like Sorkinen is still the strongest thing in, in the whole dang game. And, um, past that now I'll try and come up with like, what is the most clever, combination that i can come up with and speaking of plot twist chat i know said give me race class give me some weird class combinations oh oh i i grabbed yeah. a few yeah. i grabbed yeah. a few. um oh get oh get class make that combinations yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I oh mean, I'll, okay I'll, yeah I'll, do I'll, some multi-classes yeah I've, I've now i've now asked for both so so hit okay. me with a couple of things and then you can hit me with different things later on here and i'll tell i'll tell you in real time what i would do uh, so do you, do you want to go over the the race class at once first? So uh, the first I, I grabbed I got three of these total right now. The first two I just grabbed from th things people said. The last one I actually grabbed someone's whole one because I want to hear what you do with it. So <laughs> gnome, druid, lawful neutral. A lawful neutral gnome druid. The first thing that came to mind is I would do a spore druid who has like been living in the forest, especially starting at level one. Um, I would do, uh, the backstory would be like, just like if you know the mythology of some of those things that they thought they like hatched out of mushrooms and stuff like that, that I would be, uh, was raised an orphan who believes uh, was, was grown just out of a mushroom. Like <laughs> it was, was a child of the fungus. Um, a, ch oh, a child yeah. of the fungus is, is a terrible <laughs> combination of words <laughs> yeah 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 that would be it, it'd be unsettling by the way like I, like like i would have a lot of like growths and things all over me and would like always want hugs and um <laughs> all of my all of my wild shapes of course if the dm allowed me to do it i would flavor into just being like made out of like moss and twigs oh, yeah. and just detritus and stuff <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that's That'd what I would cool do. Hell. And honestly, I would probably pick a Zverf Nablin, so they could be all like pale and weird. And I just enjoy saying Zverf Nablin. Uh, it's yeah. it's a fun word to say. I was disappointed yeah. when it didn't show up in uh, in Baldur's Gate three when I found a a deep gnome. I was like, oh, but you're you're Surf Nablin. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, now you've got to die. Uh -huh. Yeah. Total wizard lawful good. So weird thing about turtles is they don't live particularly long. I, isn't is, that weird? Yeah, it's the strangest thing. Yeah. Um, but if I recall correctly, um, most turtles are orphans. Like they they lay the eggs and leave. Mm. Pretty sure. I mean, obviously that could be your story anyway. But I'm pretty sure even for the race, that's kind of how it is. So I would have had a turtle that was uh, found by a wizard and was raised uh, at Strixhaven in a wizard college, almost as like a pet and as a mascot. <laughs> and, and, and learn, um, like, I, I, kids, I'm way older than you think, but I don't know how many of you remember the, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movies from the 90s. Oh, yeah. 
and there was the scene where Splinter is learning uh, karate or ninjutsu oh, in the, the cage. Oh, the flashback in the cage? Yeah, oh, he's one in of my the cage things. just doing it. You know what I yep. mean? Yeah, that is how my turtle, my turtle would have would have learned magic. I uh, love they, that. They just like put him up on the desk and stuff, and he's just like looking. And then eventually, when he gets all big, especially because turtles can pull into the shell and get the AC bonus, I would cast a lot of concentration based spells like Call Lightning, and then just pull into my shell and just sit there and be like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, boom. That's yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. I like that. Uh, th- this this was the one that I pulled all from one person. This is from uh, Twenty Two Dragons. Uh, Modron Barbarian Chaotic Neutral. All hail the Modrons! All hail the Modrons! All hail the Modrons! Uh, I'd make a doll. I'd make a Dalek. Yeah. You'd make a Dalek. I'd make a Dalek. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would flavor that Chaotic Neutral as it it feels like everything is equally inferior. A Modron. I can't not see Daleks as barbarian <laughs> Modrons now. <laughs> Exterminate. Exterminate. That's that's what they do. You know what I mean? Like they're fine, and then they wind up, and it's time to destroy everything. Oh my god! It's I, I don't know if you remember that with the twelfth Doctor that I see into your soul, Doctor. I see doctor. beauty. I see divinity. I see hatred. <laughs> I see hatred and it is good. And the doctor's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I'd, ma- I'd, I'd make a Dalek. Uh, I, I might, um, even though I know they said barbarian, I might go so far as to actually take a, uh, a couple of levels in armor or artificer. Mm. So I literally could be like wrapped in metal. <laughs> yeah. Like I'd make a Dalek. I also like the idea of uh, just a, you can do a feat, Magic Initiate Warlock, to get the, the Eldritch Blast for the, the beam. Mm-hmm. There we go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the Bard's Force said, dude, I'm so adding that to my campaign now. <laughs> do it. You're welcome. All of the, take, you guys, take any of these you like and run with it. Trust I me. love like, them. I, these, these, are, these are on the house now. This is his gift to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So, so for class combos, uh, mm-hmm. Dice Forty Two says Paladin Druid. Oath of the Ancients, um, especially if it were if starting at the low level, I would I would have them have been somebody that was raised expressly to uh, defend an area, uh, and I probably would do something like a, a satyr, or even like a Ferbolg or some probably Ooh. especially a Ferbolg because they'd be like bigger. Yeah. Um, that th- this was this was their their holy mission was to protect this specific area, and for yeah. ad- and for adventuring purposes, you know they essentially would go out because they were trying to be slightly more proactive of like let's go stop them before they even get here to defend the homeland. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um. God, I I know this is invoking the thing you don't like, but I I think in fourth edition there was a class called warden. That was like kind of like that, where it was this combo of druid and uh, paladin stuff. I, I want you to know, with my normal setup, I just look for the button to hit the fade to black because I would have, I would have just been like, boop. You know what I mean? I'm like, there, there, there you go. We, we, we'll do it with practical. You know, we'll do it with practical. Uh, okay, yeah. before we go on to the next one, uh, I'd be, uh, I, I, oh. I will just say this one other thing: Moon Druid too, because um, when you when you're when you're switching into all those other shapes, you can. Um, uh, you can still smite as a, as the, the current errata. You can smite while you're well shaped. So, yep. Oh God! <laughs> Just bear claw smite. Shablam! Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's 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 it is debatable, and your DM may not let you. But current current as written interpretation is you can. Yeah. Worst yeah. case. Worst case, worst case, if your DM really intended on just like not allowing it, then you wild shift into a chimpanzee and pick up a sword and then you can smite. So <laughs> you can get there one way or another. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, before we uh, go to the, the next class combos, uh, we're, we're going to be doing the giveaway here in a little bit. Chat, keep an eye on the chat. Our awesome mod Gabe is going to put a keyword in there and uh, just repeat that into the chat and you'll be entered for a chance to win 42 chests of your choice, excluding Bahamut chests. Uh, you could get 42 freely chests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Freaking Todd Kenrick, man. <laughs> Everyone knows how much I hate Bahamut because I'm very pro Tiamat. Bahamut is dumb. And he made Bahamut Freely's father. And I was just like, 
Uh, and, and so good. Some things that I cannot say on this family stream that I was like, <laughs> how dare you? When, when, when that was revealed on, on camera that Bahamut was Freely's, Freely's father, like that was the first I'd heard of it too. So I was like, well, uh, isn't this an interesting turn of events? It <laughs> <laughs> freely thinks it's great. I don't. Bahamut's dumb. Yeah, uh, yeah. L Lauren just said that that's one of the fun moments when Akira and I uh, and, and I agreed on their dragon feelings. It's like, yes, that is true. That is true. Absolutely. I got some feelings on dragons. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Also, I. For those of you that don't know, I am freaky gigantic, and I keep getting the biggest kick out of the fact that it's like I can wrap around this so I, much you don't even know what it is. Je no, here's the thing. I saw you do that. I'm just like, that looks like it's one of the mini cans in his hand. I literally thought that earlier. <laughs> no, that's 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 full size. It's just I, I should not be. That's all. Yep. Ah, you absolutely should be, and the world's a better place for it. Oh. Uh the next class combo comes from mm -hmm. Cassius 335, Bard Fighter. Either Swords Bard or Valor Bard. Yep. Um, I'd need to read the specifics of Samurai, because they can do some weird things with advantage. Mm. Uh, that's where my, my mind went first, that, that I would be... Uh, and I'd, I'd make an actual Samurai, would be the, yeah. the, the, the concept, because Samurai had to learn a lot of artistic expression. They learned flower arrangements and calligraphy and things like that, because... As a psychological outlet, if you were doing terrible things, you had to be able to create something beautiful also. And that'd be yeah. my thing. I'd, I'd be I'd, I'd, I'd be like a Zen poet. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, be the, the wandering swordsman would, would I, be my thing. I have said for the longest time that, like, one of my uh, dream kind of games is a game that has, like, the vibe of uh, Samurai Champloo. And, yep. like, that, that would be... That would be real. That's what I'd want to play in that. Yep. 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 I, I, I never would have thought of Bard Fighter either. That's a really cool one. Mm hmm. Uh, the uh, the uh, 22 Dragons is in here again. Uh, we I grabbed uh, Wizard Monk. Wizard Monk. I would probably do. Um, the first thing that came to mind, believe it or not, is an enchanter. Ooh. That I would do a lot of like, um, I basically would make a Jedi, but <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would flavor it as like, um, I'm controlling and misdirecting all the other people while like just using all the monk avoidance stuff for myself. Um, I will tell you that the next character concept that I'm really interested to try in a long-term thing is a character that is 100% support that never actually kills anybody. Oh, I love that. We still contribute to the fight, do things like cast grease, whole person, you know, not just being like, oh, it's time to fight, I'm out. Like, no, do stuff, but never actually inflict a single hit point of damage. That That'd would be... be cool. <laughs> I think that, that, that would be really hallucinatory terrain and yeah. stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, you, I, I think you, that would be neat. That is one of them where I'm like, yeah, I feel like you do really need a multi-class for that to get certain things from other classes that let you uh, do support in that way. That's an yep. interesting character concept. Yep. Yep. Closest I've done to that is I, I essentially tried to make Mercy from Overwatch as a, uh, <laughs> as a character once. I mean, did you succeed? I did. Yeah, I had a cool ass Azamar uh, that uh, <laughs> that did some buffing and healing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, le last one of the 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 class combos and uh, uh, chat. Thank you so much for these. I I grabbed yes, these I kind of indiscriminately. So if we if you're sitting in there, I apologize. Yeah, uh, it, it, it it is not a question on the validity of the thing you posted. It just it scrolls. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from uh, J I Cants uh, Ranger Bard. There's a lot of bards in this one. I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, bards are kind of an all-purpose chassis yep. for a lot of things. Uh, believe it, I'd have to compare to make sure that this worked mechanically. But the first thing that came to my mind was Gloomstalker Spirit Bard. Ooh. And, and my whole thing would be like, again, I'm not of this world. You know? That um, sounds awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I do. It, it, I'm all I'm all shadowy emo boy. I'm that character in the anime. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but, but, but they started off their adventure working at Hot Topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a phase. <laughs> Yeah, they, the they're working on it's, it's working at Hot Topic, but they keep disappearing in the storeroom. You know, <laughs> you're like, are they are they back there? You know what I mean? I'm on break. Oh God! Yeah, turns up Depeche yeah. Mode. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I... we, it's like we get it. Your dad's a jerk. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. See, this, this is Chad. This is what I love about B Dave is that, like, the, the again, these were all just off the cuff, and uh, these are quick ideas. This, I mean, this is essentially what we we talk about on writing about drags and shit on a writing podcast of like th this sort of quick decision thing of building something and going with the gut. I love, yeah. I love seeing it in real time. Yeah, and and and, and then and, and then to to build on it for all of these things again, I I would. I would double check to just make sure it, it made sense. Like yeah. in the sense that it's like um, something like a, a barbarian wizard, for instance, makes less sense because when you're raging, you can't be casting spells, right? Um, there is very much a world where it's something like, oh, I cast fireball and then I rage and I wait in. Like that's, that's valuable. But for the most part, those things are kind of going in two different directions. Um, so I'd make sure that it actually works, you know? And then I, I'd sit in and I'd just plan it out and I'd figure out what are the feats that kind of like glue it, glue it all together. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and, you know, I'd, 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 I would plan it to level 20 because that's mm -hmm. what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, being and, in there. and that's the thing with Freelance. It's definitely the mid-max version of that because, yeah, all charisma, everything in there. So mm. every t every time, because again, I did play freely on like four or five yeah. different streams. In 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 multiple times, he got busted back down in level. Like we'd go up, and then we go back to five, and then we go up, we go back to eight, we go up, we go back to five. And every time I did it, I built him slightly differently, mm -hmm. just so I wouldn't drive myself insane of being like, you know, I gotta wait six months to get back the powers I already had. Yeah. You know. So even though he was always a bard pal and a warlock sorcerer. Sometimes I get the levels in a different order, or okay. almost always a different subclass, um, uh, or um, things like that. And that's kind of how I kind of kept it fresh and interesting, just for my own sanity. Mm -hmm. That it's like a for a, most of the time he was a glory paladin, um, but the oh, last really? yeah, but the final iteration of him was uh, mercy. Actually, he's a mercy paladin, the one that oh. went all the way to twenty. Yeah. Huh. Well, because he tried yeah. to give everybody a chance. Like, yeah. every every time, he'd be like, oh, we don't have to do this. And it's like, oh, we do. Well, okay, we do. You know? <laughs> like, right. you know? yeah. uh, like, well, okay, we do. Uh, <laughs> Lauren put into chat that uh, uh, her husband Luke is playing a wild magic barbarian, wild magic sorcerer, and the stories he tells are amazing. <laughs> I was about to say, thanks, I hate it, Luke. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's like you're the world's worst mutant, you know? Yeah. There's a there's an item too. There's a wild magic item. I hope he can get his hands on that. It's, it's again the same principle. Yeah. The wild magic item? I didn't know that. Yeah. It's uh somebody just had it at my D and D in a castle, and I forget the name of it because again, even here at this air D and D, I'm like pick pick three things: an uncommon, a rare, and a wondrous artifact. Have whatever you want. When people are like, well, can I have this thing? I'm like, yep. You know, can I have this thing? I'm like, sure. You know what I mean? And, I was like, and, and he was just talking about the fact, he was like, oh, I have to roll to see if this happens or that happens. And I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh. but it exists. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I just love wild magic in general. It's just fun to see weird stuff happen. <laughs> that, it, that is true. And, and some of it depends on what kind of, um, which table you're rolling on. Because mm -hmm. some of it is just like interesting and like, oh, that's that's neat, you know. Um, and then other things are like, um, you know, you cast fireball centered on yourself and you're like, oh, uh, you're level one. That's um, no, yeah, that might not be good. That might not be good. Oh, geez. Yeah. Now I'm remembering the, what one of, one of the what was it? Is it? I think it's only two times that I've uh, killed my uh, wife's characters. Uh, one of them was a fireball at early level. She she said that she rolled just one off in that level up from surviving. 
that fireball because <laughs> it just I mean, outright. <laughs> that's how it goes. How it goes. Yep. Um, okay. Well, uh, we're getting towards the end of the show here, and we got a couple of questions. My body's uh, ready. So let's see. Uh, let's see what chat's got up to. Uh, remember, uh, if you got any last uh, minute questions, chat, you put them in with question colon, and then your question, we might get to them. Uh, Lurking writer said, "Question: After the events of Heroes of the Plains, no spoilers beyond uh, saying Asmodeus and finally Ooh. getting married to Penelope, how is Freely?" Oh no, he's having a great time. Um, yeah. Uh, well, recently I had um, in this last um, Idol Champions presents both Tiamat and Asmodeus made appearances um, <laughs> after those events. Um, even though Freely's retired, I played him a couple of times on one shots. Uh, in in he and Penelope are are touring the plains uh, on Storm Herald. You know, I'm just having a great time. Um, there we go. There's at least one story where uh, I've told it in the future, and the, they had to go to Mount Celestia, and I had him be there as a herald of Bahamut. That's how he spent the afterlife. Uh, you know, in in the 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 plane of the of the honorable dead. You know. <laughs> um, uh, guiding other heroes to their rest um, was kind of how I, I saw him spending his eternity I at some point that. in the future. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, he he he's having a great time, very happily married, and again, uh, raising kids as we as we discovered near the end, they did have. Uh, oh my they, gosh! They, yeah, yeah, they have they have two kids. So you know, I need to talk to Hope about what our kids turn out to be and honestly the very first thing that went through my mind again because i am a monster is one of our children has to be evil because they're the two sweetest oh, yeah they're the two sweetest people and you know what i also feel like freely and probably penelope would you know want to speak for hope would still be very loving supportive parents oh yeah like like son uh this necromancy i mean you've got to be your own person of course but i just oh what I, my my great aunt thinks it's cool <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I've I've had to turn just a lot of undead out here, you know. I mean, I even had to call your unor Kira a couple of times, and I just, uh, you know, this. Uh, well, we we love you, but this is not how we raised you, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, just just like just like pact of the arch fiend warlock necromancer. <laughs> You know oh, what? I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna let Hope describe one of the kids, but one of them is absolutely going to be a pact of the Archfiend warlock. I love that, it. With Asmodeus, he's just like watched over them their entire life just to mess with us. Yeah. Oh, that's see that's that's something that like, I feel like down the line, like uh, uh, what what a Freely and Penelope's kids should be a be a character you 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 or uh, uh Hope play both. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be, that'd be we'll, great. we'll come back as their kids. Yes. Dude, we'll be freaking Jason and Jaina Solo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, that that is that's the that's the real legends right there. <laughs> yeah. So that's the name of the next stream, Real Legends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I gotta talk to Hope about that. We gotta make that happen uh cassius335 says in the same vein as the lurking writer how is storm herald I, i'm assuming it's just going well <laughs> you know i bet you storm herald is just beat to hell because i feel like neither of them drives well I, I feel like if you remember that scene in the finale of battlestar galactica when they jumped it the last time and it's like <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like it is probably vitally in need of maintenance if we could get whittle up there um it's, it's you know there there's there's no oil in those crankshafts i i don't uh and a lot a lot of uh, plumes of smoke that come out of it but it, it keeps going where we need to go so that that's fine yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh the 22 dragon says question uh how much how many game sessions per week does it take uh uh to play uh or oh okay this, this got a little bit off, but I, I think I got what they're talking about. There's such a like, how many sessions per week does it take to become a uh, as good a DM as you are? Uh, he says I discovered, or they said I discovered B Dave uh, with the last ICP, and it's the best DMing I have seen in my opinion. How much DMing have you done? Oh man, I literally have been at it for 32 years. Yeah, I mean, during during the height of my Patreon, I ran 35 to 40 games a month for 18 months. I mean, I think I think that right there yeah. was because I, I already had some presence. That's why I was able to do the Patreon. But I think 
that was when I discovered the true nature of the dark side of the forest there. You know, I mean, like anything, the more time you spend doing it, the better you get. However, if I would give a piece of advice, my advice to aspiring DMs is the same as my advice to aspiring writers is when you start, when you're consuming content and watching stories, start consuming it as a storyteller. Yes. Start, start paying attention to if something elicits an emotional reaction, why? And not always just a positive emotional reaction. If, if something really scares you, if you just hate something, if you're like, this was the dumbest thing I've ever seen, why? Why do you feel that way? And how would you do it better? Like start seeing where you can take the things apart and reassemble it, you know? Because uh, that's how you develop your own style. And it's not just watching people like me or Mercer or Brennan or Abria because, you know, this is when I have to give my speech. People watch and they're like, oh, I can't do what you do. I can't do what Mercer does. I can't do what Brennan does. And it's like, you're right. You can't. You can't. But we can't do what you do. We can't yeah. tell your stories. You know, yeah. we, we, we can't sing the unique song that is in your heart to share with the people at your table. And that is still beautiful. And so if you take from it, you know, how I might set up a, a twist, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I've said many times, I measure my effectiveness in a story as a storyteller and how fast I can make someone cry. Not that I'm actually trying to hurt them, although we all know I gain power from your tears. It is that that is proof that a human being is feeling something. Yeah. You know, that, that, that this, this is, they're having a true and genuine emotional response. So the content's connecting. That's mm -hmm. what, that's why that means something to me. Um, but you know, if there's somebody that you really like how they set up combat or how they keep it moving and it's crisp or the way that they describe things, they even be on tabletop, even, you know, things in star Wars, you know, like if, if you really loved Obi-Wan, ask yourself why. If you really didn't love Obi-Wan, ask yourself why, you yeah. know? And yeah. how, can, how can you take that and apply it to the stories you tell? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I definitely agree with, like, with, with all that. And I, I will add, like, do not try to copy, uh, like, a DM as a whole. Take things they're doing. Yep. Like, like things here and there, you're like, oh, I like that. That seems like a style I enjoy. Yep. Just add that to your toolkit. Don't take the yep. whole, don't try and be Matt Mercer, but it's like, oh, I like the way that he calls out initiative. I'm going to, yep. I'm going to take that and put it in the bag. It's, um, it's like Bruce Lee said, take what is useful, discard what is useless, add what is distinctively your own. Hell yes. Yep. Um, last question we got here before we got to go and, out. And, and I would just, yeah, I give you blanket permission to shamelessly steal anything I do. <laughs> Have at it. If <laughs> hopefully you find a way to do it better. Hell yeah. Uh, Cassie's three, three, five with the last question. Uh, saw a YouTube short where Brennan Lee Mulligan was discussing the idea that a sorcerer's spell casting modifier should be constitution. What do you two think of the suggestion? I saw somebody making this argument, uh, for warlocks also really? oh yeah. yeah it makes mm. more sense to me for a warlock than a sorcerer simply because your packed base magic i feel like should be costing you something yeah. like raceland even though raceland's a wizard not a warlock but conceptually like you're, you're giving up a part of yourself yeah and i feel like that should be reflected in that um I don't really have a dog in this fight because I know the whole point was just to make sorcerers different from wizards. And I think that's more important that sorcerers and wizards work differently. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, I don't mind it being charisma because to me that's reflective of it being just something you are that you don't necessarily have to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I also always see uh, sorcerers being super cocky because they're like, I don't have to read spell books. <laughs> my, my, my whole thing with Freely is he never knew where his powers came from. Yeah. Like both of all bards, paladins, warlocks, and sorcerers can all be untaught. He yeah. does not know. He just hits evil things with his sword and explosions happen. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it if, if for some reason... You know, one D and D comes out, and that's how it is. I'll just yeah. be like, okay. Yeah, that, I, I, th you know, I think I think that's the thing for me is that like I I, yeah. I can see an argument argument for it either way. Like I I I 
pretty sure I saw that short and I do remember being like, all right, yeah, that's, that's pretty good reasoning behind that. Um, but that's also just that weird space that sorcerers are in, uh, where it's like, yeah, it's supposed to be different from a wizard. They're innately magical. Yeah. I could see that coming from, uh, you know, their constitution and the way that they hold themselves or something, but I could also see them just kind of being super cocky about it. And that, uh, that charisma makes sense because they've got, they got such a big ego about being able to just throw fireballs. I think the other thing, and this isn't particularly sexy, is except for saves, you don't really do anything with con. Yeah. And so if you have a chunk con, I mean, I guess you get a lot of hit points, but again, being a big bag of hit points isn't interesting. Yeah. You know? Uh, whereas every other attribute at least applies to some skill in a way that is probably something you use a lot, or at least you can find ways to use it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like making them con-based would be a net loss for the human at the table and the things they're capable mm -hmm. of. Um, yeah. So I'm like, that's fair. But again, I, 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 will say, I would, I, I, it's not a hill I'm prepared to die on. Yeah. 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 I will say that it, it that is one of those things where I'm like, well, I actually think that, that that's a, that's a whole other conversation itself. I would love there to be more like con skills somehow. Like I, I think that is one of those attributes that should be able to have more utility at the table. Besides I'm beefy. Uh, well, I, I mean, they're like, you get to live, you big bastard. You know, that's, 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 that's what you get. You know, it, it, Freely's entire life, I, pl I played him from level 1 to level 20 with, again, multiple do-overs. I think it was level 18. It might have been level 19 that he broke 100 hit points. He was within uh, power word kill range 100% of his career. <laughs> and, uh, until, and got very spicy with a lot of things very much capable of casting power word kill. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, like I, 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 think, I think he retired with 107 hit points at level That's 20. That's incredible. Especially because Briv had like 280 or something oh, yeah. stupid. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, well, we got to start wrapping things up, B. Dave. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today. Uh, if people want to find you and what you do on the interwebs, where can they do so? Uh, you can follow me on the Tweetograms uh, at B. Dave Walters and B. Dave Walters or War. Also, uh, if you want deeper dives into everything I'm talking about, uh, you should visit my website, theundisputedacademy.com, uh, where I have 14-day DM, 14-day player, where I talk you through all of this stuff, including character creation and how to come up with these things. Uh, there's also 14 Day Writer, if you fancy yourself wanting to get into novels, short stories, uh, screenplays, comic books, graphic novels, and 14 Day TTRPG Creator, if you want to try and create this kind of content. Also, you can use code 14 Day 50 to get 50% off. Don't tell nobody, it still yep. works. Big secret. So, Big secret. we go to theundisputedacademy.com, 14 Day uh, fourteen day 50. Yep. I heard that'll save you five years off your, uh, your writing career. Five years! It'll save you. 14 Day Writer will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, you know what? Someone's like, hey, do you got a link for that? And you know what? I do because I put it in the description of every writing about Drags of Shit episode, which we may hey. as well plug as well because we don't talk about a lot in here. If you want to hear more of B Dave and I talk with the amazing, the incredible, the awesome Aaron M. Evans, uh, you can uh, check out Writing About Dragons and Shit, where we talk about writing and all that fun stuff. And we'll, we'll, we'll bribe you with another Havilar recap of something. Yeah. <laughs> there in the chat is the link for und uh, the the Undisputed Academy. The Undisputed Code uh, that, 14 Day 50. Yeah, that one is specifically for the writer, but you can find the other ones in there as well. B Dave, again, thank you so much for talking with me today about Freely, our favorite lucky boy. Um, and, and we'll see pick what up, he gets pick up, up to. Pick up the skin. The glitch skin is still live, I do believe. I it think that's is. kind of the point. Yeah. So it check is. it out. You know, I mean, uh, I was always tall for a halfling, but now I'm, I, I don't know. I've, I've had my short for an ASMR. I, don't, I have no point of reference anymore, honestly. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that is going to do it for this week's episode of Idle Insights. So until next week, take care of yourselves.